Welcome back, everybody, to Pull Hook Golf, the podcast. This is episode number 77. I'm your host, Matt Cook. This right here is Mr. Bobby Brown. And boy, oh boy, hockey stick episode time, or should we say upside down hockey stick time, Bobby, with the 77. But man, do we have a good week this week. You had to think about that one, didn't you? Well, I, the only reason I had to think about it is because last time we were 75, but you had Fat Boy Perez on. So yeah. I'm caddy math. Even though I haven't caddied in a while, I can still I can still do those numbers. <laughs> yeah, Fat Perez was a great guest that we had on. Um, he had some funny stories, man. If you haven't seen that interview, check it out because the van incident to where he uh, they were in one of those high-rise vans, one of those yeah. Mercedes vans, and all oh. of a sudden – trying to get into a tunnel in Canada to get to the golf course. Didn't yeah. think anything of it yeah. hits the top of it. And then they were like halfway in by the time that they like really realized what was going on. So they decided just to hit the gas and just drive right through. But the way he tells it, it's hilarious. Um, and definitely got to check out that episode. But on tonight's episode, Bobby, we've got the recap of our first FedEx playoff event, which is the St. Jude championship. And that was, I mean, to turn into a playoff. So playoff, yeah. playoff, playoff. We're talking about playoffs. Wow. All right. So we've got that. We've also got to preview the upcoming BMW championship and go yeah. over some of our penny bets for this coming up week. And then we end it with just a fantastic segment around live golf Bedminster. It's one of our favorite topics talking about live golf and we've got uh, some good stuff to go over there as well. Um, and the results, which weren't good for you. They, they really were Are when they? it came to, Oh, Oh, surprise, surprise. Yeah, sorry sorry about that. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. You I did for you. a little not bit. not there yet, but I had you. You were close. I know. You I had definitely you. Definitely close. There's a story there. It was there a Jedi, Jedi story on Sunday. <laughs> Can't do it yet. <laughs> All right, let's kick it off with right, the buddy. recap of the FedEx St. Jude Championship. Yes. I mean, $3.6 million prize to good old Lucas Glover. He goes back to back. Bobby is, I mean, you were talking about it on the last episode that if you put him up there with three of the top guys in the world, as far as ball strikers and have him right there, that he would be, have one of the best sounding impacts. Remember what I said was, if you put 20 of the best players in the world, you put him in the middle, you would go. He fits, right? And his, you know, there's some validity to, whoa, big word for me, validity. I like to that. my statement because I saw that Max Homa said the same thing. He goes, his ball makes a different sound than the than the rest of us. And he's obviously got those, he's got those yips worked out, man, because he's bearing putts left and right. He doesn't look flinchy one bit. He had some adversity on Sunday. He got over it. He kept his pedal to the metal, stayed focused in there. It's funny how you always say $3.6 million to the winner. And my brain goes $360,000 for Tommy <laughs> Lamb plus 130 or something from the week before. So that's, man, that's a half million dollars in two weeks to Tommy Lamb. That's a lot of money, Bobby. Gosh, that's so much money right now. That Are you so Jones in right now for a little bit totally. of that prize money? Honestly, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I was 15 and 15 last year and got a whopping nine or a ten thousand dollar check, and all my buddies are fuck. Your I mean, buddies are raking it in. Maybe next year. <laughs> <laughs> so funny, I was laying on the couch the other night and I'm like, do I need to upgrade players again? <laughs> it's a never end you battle. <laughs> This thing's not wired properly. It's a never, it's a never ending battle with me. You know, I'm like, gosh, should I make this move? Should I make that move? And nah, your man SH Kim yeah, I know, he I is going to be know. an absolute stud I, next year. Yeah, he's getting comfortable, Bobby. He needed a break. Uh, you called it. You're like, he's burnt yeah. out. He's ready to go home back yeah, to South Korea for a little bit. He'll come yeah. back strong. We got the Fortinet yeah. championships coming up in Napa that you're going to be at. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. going to be phenomenal. We're going to have a great yeah, time. Right <laughs> right around the corner, man. I'm I'm looking forward to it, but it's a constant day. It's a constant daydream. It's a constant day, daydream with me. I mean, it's, I mean, truth be told, it's part jealousy too, really. You yeah, know what I mean? It's natural. It's part, human. Yeah. yeah, it's human. So maybe, maybe things will go my way next year. We got this year, this year over with. So, but I will tell you this. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question because you asked me this question and, and you're our live guy. 
right? You asked if this tournament, if I thought this tournament at Memphis was going to be exciting, I think, I think the my answer yes was affirmative because the cream started rising to the top there late on Sunday as they usually as they usually do. And I did I did kind of make an off the wall statement that that um, uh, you know even though Patrick lost in the playoff and Rory was putting the squeeze on him that 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 golf course was. A course or that playoff event is a, an event that's known for somebody like, and I'm not going to say somebody like Lucas Glover to win it or Seb Strack in the playoff last year, Willie Z winning or something like that. But I think when we go ahead to this week, you're going to see more of the probably one of the the guys that we expect to win, you know, ca- catch a W for some reason. I just I just feel like some of those guys didn't play, you know, some of those guys probably don't like that golf course. Um, some of those guys didn't play Greensboro the week before. So I, you hate to say a world-class player needs to get one under their belt, but it's funny. I was texting with Keegan last night. We're kind of each other's go-to for uh, what shows to watch on Netflix or something. And we're both out of inventory and we're bugging each other. And, and uh, he said the same thing. It's like, man, I hadn't played, you know, in a week or two. And I felt like I had to get one under my belt and I'm really ready to go. So maybe there's some theory behind that, but it turned out to be totally, a totally exciting tournament. Obviously they got a ton of rain there. I think it was ball in hand for four straight days. So, you know, those guys, if, you, if they're hitting in the fairway there, Matt, as, as you know, you know, they're, they're taking dead aim on very, very soft greens, even though, you, you know, 15 under is respectable for, for four rounds, you know, it's not like they shut the lights off it or anything, you know, a random guy would go low here and there and, and pass a bunch of guys, but those two guys in the playoff, it was a shame to see, um, you know, it was a shame to see um, Patrick hit it in, in the water there in the playoff on 18 after not making a birdie, I'm not making a bogey all day, but I mean, it was a shame for everybody, but Lucas Glover and Tommy Lamb and their team, right? So it was. Yeah. So they were, they were, I, I don't think you let your guard down. I think if, if I'd been in that position, I'd been in a couple of playoffs before where you're like, Oh fuck, all we got to do is put this in the, in, in the fairway. And it's kind of, it's kind of ours, you know, Patrick hit a great pot. I thought he made the pot. I thought he made the 25 footer for, for par, how that thing just wiggled right, right at the end. Did you see the slow-mo of that pot? I mean, he got the perfect read from Lucas, right. And it's inside, it's literally inside, right. Breaking left with what 16, 18 inches to go. And as it runs out of speed, it just wiggles. Right. And that's golf. And, and we had the cream of the crop rising to the top with, with Rory putting a squeeze on them. Um, Tommy Fleetwood is just keeps knocking at the door. You, a lot of people would say Taylor Moore was a surprise, but you and I both know that Taylor Moore is an, an, an epic premier ball striker. And when he gets hot, he gets hot and he's going to be a, you know, he's going to catch a dub here. Pretty soon, I think I would think in the next in the next year, you know, next group of guys at sixth place: Cam Davis, Sung J M, Russell Henry, Jordan Spieth, Max Homa, Corey Connors, Adam Shank on form. You know, I thought it was a pretty packed leaderboard. What about you? It was a packed leaderboard. I yeah. mean, I don't know what the question was about live golf, but I mean, definitely the action was with the PGA Tour this weekend because. Well, Cam Smith did run away with the Bedminster event, and yeah, it wasn't really yeah. that exciting, especially no, when it came to the team stuff either. No, I, but, I know Liv's, Liv's coming up a little, but even if you went to the guys that were T13, Colin Markawa, Saeed, Victor Hovland, you know, Xander was top 25, Tommy Kim, your boy, was top 25. Um, all those names that I just read down, if you looked at your Liv leaderboard going through 20 or 25 names, you tell me which of the better core group is from 1 to 25, and I really don't even think it's close. But it was super exciting. I Disappointments, I'm sure John Rahm finishing 37th and not getting off to a good start on Thursday was a definite disappointment for him. I mean, Cam Young has been a little bit disappointing because I think he spoiled us. Hey, God. Go back to John Rahm. That poor guy, man. I mean, did you watch his first two rounds? Yeah, I did. I watched it. It was I it all. that Thursday round was a nightmare for him. Yeah, I mean, was. Rory and Scotty, how many times were they standing on the green and yeah. John Rahm is over there trying to get a ruling? I yeah. mean, they would happen five, six times yeah. in that golf round, and somehow he ends up shooting just a couple over. I'm like, yeah. He was in trouble the entire time. It was absolutely impressive and of what John Rahm still did. 
And that's that golf course, right? If you get out position and you're not driving into the fairway, the rough there is wicked, just absolutely wicked. And you're really strategizing on what's your best chance to get a decent look for par. So he grinded through it, finished 37th. I'm sure he's going to be a force this week because he's, you know, we hadn't been, we haven't been to Olympia fields. We'll get there, but we haven't been there in a few years, but we all know he made that 60, 70 footer to beat Dustin in a playoff um, a few years back, but it was, it was a great tournament. I mean, Scotty Scheffler borderline getting the yips now because yeah. now it looked yippy to me last well, week. Well, he's got that bigger putter from Taylor made the spider. And I've gone back. So I've gone back and forth from a Scotty Cameron or a ping answer to the Taylor made spider before. And even that title is X five. Uh, I think it's an X 5.5. But that being said, those are the bigger head putters, right? And mm-hmm. what I always found that was tough was when you're switching back and forth between the two, eventually you try to do too much with the bigger putter, which is where like sometimes those yips can come right back yeah. in. And Scotty yeah. did not look good. No, he did not look comfortable. I actually thought I saw him whack a couple putts inside of inside of three feet so i mean what what's going to be next i guess i get it human nature things aren't going good you're going to switch putters you don't see the ball going in the hole but the fact is is the original putter he had for three or four years i would not be surprised i I haven't got a rundown on him this week it's a little too early in the week but i'm not sure what he's rolling this week but i wouldn't be shocked to see him going back to old faithful so to speak you know this week coming up so you know we'll see we'll see how it goes i just mentioned I just mentioned, um, you know, Lucas has put a big spin on this Ryder Cup deal now, right, too, because I've been involved with a couple of them. I, I know the deal. They like to pick one or two guys that are the hot hand that that are playing really, really good. They try and get guys that are on form. And obviously, I think they would be foolish not to put Lucas on this team right now. So where that puts a guy like Cam Young, who Freddie Couples has gone on record saying that he's definitely going to be on the team. And I could see why, because he can just dominate an opponent and overpower, you know, the, the, let's just say that format of the Ryder Cup sense up fabulous for him but where does this put jt where does this put jt in in the whole mix obviously we probably know probably on the outskirts probably but yeah probably on the outside i i mean i know who was i listening to who was i listening to today okay my guy john wood who does tv for nbc they're actually having the u.s amateur this week at cherry hills in colorado cherry hills is the host course so Great john club. Yeah, great club. So John is doing the commentary there. And I saw he did an interview where they asked him that question. He goes, for sure, I put Lucas on the team. John's been involved in probably six, seven or eight, six or seven Ryder Cups. He's very he's very passionate about it. He was a, a very a very calming influence to me when I did my first one in 2010 when he was working for Hunter Mahan in, in Wales where we were. We see what I'm wearing. Yeah, USA. We, I'm starting early. Where we almost came back and, and won at the last 45 minutes there. But he said one thing JT's got going for him is, is this scenario that if Jordan Spieth says to Jack, says, listen, I, w- I want JT as my partner. You know, I, I feel like he's the best fit for this team, blah, 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 that that could that could co- probably sway a decision. But it, it, let's be honest, as far as live guys go, Bruce Kepka will be the only one on that team. I don't even see Dustin getting getting picked because i i told you the conversations i've had with smitty brian smith zach's caddy who doesn't say a lot about anything but he's like listen as far as these lift guys are concerned as far as i know you know they're gonna have to earn their way onto the team and it just doesn't look like anybody but brooks well it's impossible now for yeah. majors where their only chance so you know we got we got a lot of stuff we got a lot of stuff with the coming up, you know, with the Ryder Cup and some decisions. Zach's, you know, I, was, I, I saw Zach in the locker room at Ooh, Green. We get to have a Ryder Cup episode. Yeah, it just awesome. hit me. Oh, yeah, my gosh. Awesome. I got yeah. some great, I got some great, right? I got some great Ryder Cup stories, too, from from what I've been involved in. Some, kind, you know, kind of funny ones and the, the whole locker room scenario. And when I was doing it, it was back when Tiger went to his corner, Phil went to his corner, and Stuart Sink was over here, and Jim Fuhr wasn't super social at that point and but now it's with the uh, the younger guy you know they look for chemistry now was the big thing in the team room that's where europe was that's so why jt might end up being on the team yeah, well, he, he's good he brings good chemistry and he b- brings good vibes but i asked zach i go man you're a busy man he goes god you have no idea the stress he goes but it's a good stress right it's a good stress so well um, we're looking forward to rome coming up very soon so quick question you know. for you bobby yeah what, what do did you, you think of patrick cantley and that miss 
into the water in the playoff. I don't think and, he – I think he just overcurved it a little bit, you know? But is that a common thing for Patrick Cantley? Now, remember, what tournament was it last year to where he was in that similar situation and he hooked one in with a three-wood into the left desert and he had to take a – penalty drop out of the bush gosh what golf tournament was that i'm tr- i can't yeah. think of the name of it but he yeah. was also in a playoff at, at that point or was at least like coming down and the 18th hole and kind of blew it but i just wonder like is that a bugaboo of patrick Cantley? i don't think so no i don't think so I, I honestly don't think so patrick Cantley is not afraid of anything or any situation or any scenario uh whatsoever he's an absolute beast in the in those things and he just Hit one in the water. I mean, it wasn't a horrible shot, obviously. No, it wasn't. It looked like I had a chance to stay up. It kind of trickled in late and that kind of stuff. The only thing I can tell you is that it's common sense that all of us know that three woods turn over a little bit more than than a driver would. And that's a player's choice. Well, you either bomb driver down the right or you hit three wood. And, you know, I know he hit three wood perfect there earlier on Sunday. And he was probably up there just challenging the whole, I mean, what, what do you have to lose when you're in a playoff? Right. What, what do you have to lose? And, and I'm quite just honest, the tournament, you know, I've been in a few of them. Yeah. Just the tournament, but I've been in a few of them and I always thought it was an advantage to play first, right? It's always an advantage to play first until something like that happens, but you always want to play first and put the pressure on your opponent. And it just didn't work out. He didn't hit a great way. I think it had a buck 40 left and he didn't have a great, hit a great wet shot by his standards. You know, although that left pin over there, when you're covering that much water with the, even with the short iron, from that that side of the fairway it's a little bit more intimidating and he just hit you know you, you ever you remember ever remember in school when you had like a paper or something and 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 you just know that you killed it right that you just did bobby every oh. time i did yeah it came back with like a d or a c plus well, that's exactly but that's exactly my point not that bad but i mean you ever feel like you got a a plus on a paper and you got boned and you got an a minus or a b plus and that's probably what you know he, that's probably what it's probably he, more realistic like for that, but, smart people. Yeah. Well, yeah, well that doesn't count me, but I was just using <laughs> Not me. I, actually that's a copyright infringement. Cause I heard Payne Stewart say that once about something. <laughs> they, you know, get an A plus on it. I feel like you got an A plus on the fa- paper and you got fucked and got an A minus or a B plus. So. <laughs> but it, t- it was a great tournament. I mean, we can't say enough about the way Lucas Glover is playing right now. And it would just be awesome to see him on. It would be awesome to see him on the Ryder cup team. Do you want to know why? I agree. He's a guy's guy, right? Yeah. And in that locker room, you like guy, you like guys, guys, so to speak, you know. And he would gel, and he's very highly respected. He's been out there forever. He knows everything about everything. There's nothing that could possibly surprise him. He's in a wonderful frame of mind right now. And you know, let, let's not forget about the whole idea behind. You know, we're all golf about this tournament, but there's a bigger picture for for the St. Jude Children's Hospital and that kind of stuff. And I and I'm fortunate enough to caddy for Dustin when he won there. And it's a it's a big deal when those kids come out and you know and they design the bibs and they design a lot of players' shoes and you know you you win or lose at that tournament when you walk off the 18th green and you see those kids standing there you know and just the sheer joy that they're getting and the excitement in their in their life compared to what they've been through in their life it just puts everything else in perspective i mean you you could make triple bogey on the last hole and lose the golf tournament or something like that and you see those kids and you're like you know reality check reality check so it's it's a it's a fantastically run event and and um, you're fortunate to be there you know yeah. you're, it's a privilege to be there it was definitely with 70 guys it was definitely a privilege to be there they did a much better job on this telecast with the whole drama of who was going to be number 50 you know they had real-time points going on on you know with the network and that kind of stuff and that's and we when we touched on that, we touched on that compared to Greensboro, how much more exciting Greensboro was when it was 125 guys and not 70 guys. And so Green. here we are moving on to the next one, which is, is going to carry even more drama, I would imagine, you know, because now because now if you make it to East Lake, right, obviously all 50 of these guys are going to be in the designated events. But if you make it into East Lake, it even it even carries more weight and what i mean by more weight and you might think this is funny but 
it's not supposed to be because of all the horrible things that have been ha are happening in Maui and Lahaina, which is literally right around the corner from from Kapalua. But if you catch your if you catch your ticket to East Lake, you catch your ticket to Maui, which is a just the best place in the world to start the year, right? Doesn't totally doesn't agree. Get any better, but you know, I don't want to take away from the tragedy that's. You know, I was so sad to hear all of that happening in Maui because honestly, I've been, you know, seven or eight times and, you know, Lahaina is like our hangout, like, like the Lahaina Grill is the best restaurant, I think, on the island and just sheer absolute devastation, you know, down Front Street and that kind of stuff, because that's where we'd all go to hang out. But if you get into town early or something like that, you play a little golf or you have your spouse or your family with you. And we all go to Lahaina and we all hang out and go, you know, there's a Quicksilver store. There's a Honolulu cookie store. I know that sounds so random, but it, all these places that, you know, are are no longer there, you know. And Bobby, what's, people, your, what's your favorite store that you'd go in and spend the most amount of money at? Like... Like where, like, you know, <laughs> in Maui, bro. Um, well, uh, it's so Quick silver. It sounded like, I mean, no, that well, was the first thing out of your mouth. And that's so late was, in the well, alphabet. <laughs> well, there's, there's a few of them. There's Quicksilver, there's Billabong, there's Volcom, there's Hurley, there's Element. Those wow. were my, those were my, those Skater were my, dude. those were my big stores, but the there's a watch store that I was emotionally attached to because Dustin seemed to win for me every single year for four or five, six years straight. And so his deal was he would always buy me a new watch, $1,500 cap, you know, but he'd always buy me a new watch. And there's a nice little watch store that carries nice little Gucci's or tags that, that I would, that I would buy. So I would say that was the one I enjoyed going to the most, you know, the store I spend the most money on at, at and that's fucking Nike. <laughs> <laughs> Nike online buying yeah, those dunks were you yes Nike, Nike that oh yeah I'm replenishing inventory as we speak there you go I got, I got all kinds of deals working nice like what was your favorite watch that Dustin ever got you oh I will tell you for sure it was do you remember Tag Heuer had a deal with Tiger for a while and he yep. made a golf watch which was not like like this watch I have which was it was square it was basically square with kind of a, a rubber band and and that kind of stuff but that one and that was well was well more than fifteen hundred dollars but he was very generous to buy that for me but I was I'm a big Gucci watch guy I don't know why mm. and it doesn't have to be a twenty thousand dollar watch I like those seven hundred and fifty to um fifteen hundred dollar watches and it's it's funny you talk about like this is a Gucci watch right here. Guess who bought that for me a few years ago? That was Sung Jay. Just the totally out of the blue. Wow. He's like, "Well, you like Gucci watches and that kind of stuff." And he showed up at Sony one year and he gave me a watch and and I thought that was pretty cool. So you know, yeah, that's pure class that was, that right there. The I'd be like, guys, my favorite watch is Rolexes. So let's. Well, uh... <laughs> yeah, never been. Oh, I could never afford one. Number one, but I was never a big. I was never a big uh rolex guy i don't like chunky i guess you can call him chunky want to hear my tragic my tragic the day just what are you talking about those things are so they're small they're slim oh my goodness look at you not knowing your watch i'm a big watch guy um, do i strike you as a guy that needs to be involved in the big dick contest no <laughs> no you do not need to slam that thing down there on the table okay <laughs> um well oh, i was gonna tell you this funny little uh watch story so D dustin won seven or eight times for me right so i had six or seven watches and they were pretty nice so there was always a couple that i would that i would wear i would obviously wear the tiger woods tag one on the golf course all the time but i was going out of town i was going out of town uh, i don't know this was some years ago and four or five of the watches i had put into a small brown paper bag and i we have a, a SUV and I put it in the back seat of the SUV and I was going to drop them off at our local, my local jewelry guy to kind of clean them up and change the bands and, and that kind of stuff, get in, get them looking cool. So I was gone for like three or four weeks and I came back home and I asked, you know, I asked Laura, I go, Hey, did you see this little brown paper bag that was in the back seat um, of the, of the car? Oh no. She's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, did you take the car to go get washed or anything like that? She's like, Oh yeah, I took the car to go get detailed and everything like that. And, and I didn't, I didn't press it any longer, any further, but I know what happened. She fucking, she's not the most patient person in the world. So I guarantee she thought it was like, a she tossed bag it. Of fucking trash. Yeah. Like five. Of them. Wow. Yeah. Well, kill that bitch. Bobby, that's <laughs> not good. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And you know, the funny thing is the very first one he got me was, I don't have it here. Was it like this silver one, non-chunky, you, you, you know, and it had like this, 
I don't know, like a Tiffany colored face. If of all things, Gucci made a Tiffany colored face watch. And that sounds Lori, sexy right there. Well, it was so sexy that Lori decided to inherit it oh. for herself. So it's Lori's watch. So I actually have a, <laughs> I have a, I have a couple of them left, but it, I don't know, a funny, funny, sad story. Anyway, ah, it really is. Really yeah. is. Talking yeah. about funny, sad stories. Yeah. Penny bet for last week. Mm-hmm. I took the first one, which yeah. was Sung Jay over, over Brian. Brian. Brian Harmon, which you Brian Harmon Brian didn't is, play very well. Well, he, well, quite honestly, if no, he did not play very well. Where did he finish at seven under? He finished at seven yeah. under, but you know, he was four over after four holes or five holes. So he actually played when he got his feet, you know, when he came out of hibernation, where, out, out of hibernation from drinking too much out of the Claret jug, I reckon. Um, uh, he actually played good golf. I mean, he, he played 11 under the next, you know, 54 holes or whatever. So I knew I was never going to win that one, but I got you on the other one. You did. But, JJ Spawn was a great choice. I told yeah. you that was actually my choice up yeah. until you took him. And then Sepp Straka, yeah. he really played he, he poorly. Yeah, really bad. Oh. I mean, he finished over par. So Surprising. He was on a little bit of a roll through the British and everything like that. But that's golf, right? These guys get hot for – you know what? Not that I want to – I'm not dishing on Lucas Glover, and I'm not considering him an average player right now because he is well above average, and he's probably – you know, at the moment you could make a case that he's the best player in the world um, tonight, wherever you are. But remember I told you the, the old saying that I thought that um, – for the most part, most tour players make 60 or 70% of their, their money in a three to four week run. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's one of those deals right there. I'm not saying it's not, it'll probably continue. Lucas is probably going to have another great week. I mean, I have no idea. I can't look into a crystal ball and see if he's going to win or anything like that, but there's some, there's some truth to that. Unless you have the big, you know, your big 10 or your big 15 player that players that consistently make a boatload every single week, just a huge check. But I think that has something to do with it. You're not something to do with it, but I think there's some truth to that statement that, you know, you know, six months ago, I think three months ago or four months ago, Lucas Glover was way outside the top 125, right? Like he hadn't gone to the, he hadn't gone to, yeah. And this room, I watched the rage of the broomstick coming right now because my buddy S Y no sent me a picture um, today. You know, he's been, he doesn't have great status out here, but you know, you, you randomly see in Dallas and some, and Reno and some of these tournaments where that's why I know she needs 62 or 63. And he's not historically known as a very good putter at all. And um, uh, he sent me a picture today. He goes, look at my new toy. And he had a lab oh. golf, lab golf broomstick. He, and he texts me in quotations. He goes, if it work, you caddy for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. If it work, you. So I hit him back with this witty answer: a smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> Koreans love the smiley. Face. <laughs> you can really <laughs> transcend words with emojis. So <laughs> yeah. I, I get it. It makes yeah. complete sense, Bobby. Gotcha. Let's talk a little bit about the BMW Championship yeah. that you, we have upcoming. We'll get to our penny bet picks in just a little bit but talk to me i mean olympia it's been a couple years since uh been back in the chicago area for the bmw championship what was it last year out in delaware uh yeah we were in delaware yeah we were that was a very cool golf course we were in delaware uh last year so we haven't the deal is is we haven't the only time i have been there was in 2020 and i was there with with sung jay and it was unbelievably Mm -hmm. hard i mean it was four under one there were Matt there were only five guys under par for the whole for the whole week to tell you the truth but the difference between last year and this year is they got two two and a half inches of rain today they've getting been getting nothing but rain up there all of August and uh, when we were there we heard that they hadn't got any rain in like 45 days or two months up there so we dealt with we dealt with firm and fast give you an idea how how tough it was I think if you shot five over par or six over par you were easily in the top 20 because i know sung jay finished about 55th or 56th and he played terrible if well he just hit it all over he was out of position and he finished 55th or 56th and he shot one over 
He shot one over on the last day to finish at 12 over for the tournament for, for T56. And the one over, I'll remember this. I don't remember a lot about the golf course, but I, I just remember thinking to myself, we shot, we just shot one over on Sunday. If we, if we could have done that three days in a row before that, we would have finished like 13th or 14th, somewhere around there. So it is an absolute beast. I will tell you that you would think that scores are going to be a little bit better this year because it's going to be, Probably going to be ball in hand, I would imagine, early in the week. I haven't looked at weather forecasts yet. But, you know, you, you can get more aggressive on the greens. But the fact is, is if it, that place has some gnarly rough. And, it, you know, when it's super wet out and they get that much rain and you get that and you get that kind of rough, then that's the great equalizer. So it should be it should be exciting. You know, that playoff in 2020 was simply amazing. You know, I think John Rahm, what started the day, five John or six. Johnny Rahm. He shot five or six, he was five or six shots off the lead when he won the playoff in 2020 and, and, and shot four or five under the last day or something like that and, and tied Dustin. Dustin made a bomb putt, I think, in regulation, and then Rom made it just an absolute a putt that you would never think you would even make. You know, you, you would think you had a better chance of putting it off the green, but and That's he got right. it. I do remember that. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. That was a, it was I didn't realize that was at Olympia Fields. It, yeah, it was at Olympia Fields. Yeah, yeah, because we don't go. We, You know, this is the first time we've been back to Chicago, I think, since 2020. And, you know, historically, the BMW Championship is we, we always played somewhere in Chicago, whether it was Conway Farms or it was Cog Hill or it was just somewhere in that golf crazed area, you know, and it's run by the WGA, the Western Golf Association, who's big on caddies, you know, sending, getting, putting money together to put young kids through school that are caddying on the weekends and that kind of stuff. So it's a pretty special it's a pretty special tournament. I mean, they take care of us unbelievably well, the caddies. You want to know how good they take care of the caddies this year? They oh, get the caddies courtesy cars, BMW SUV courtesy cars. 50 caddies got courtesy cars this year. That's pretty money. Yeah, how about how about that? It used to be that if you or if you were the caddy who had won that tournament before, then you get a courtesy car every time that you – that you come back after that there you get a courtesy car but you have to be working for the same player so another bad story for me so i got lucky <laughs> and dustin won that at cog hill in 2013 i'm gonna say and then we split and in 2014 i had to fucking walk by austin johnson's fucking parking spot with that brand new hundred thousand dollar bmw parked in it and his little wifey dropping oh, him that's off that's hard and I'm like, that is a hard look bobby he took your bmw spot yeah yeah wow. i was not i was very much not happy with that you know they're all you can't be happy about no that. i wasn't happy about i mean that. you were the winner it should have gone I to know. you you know what i i i said that to i said that to to one of the big wigs there and that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm sure that went over well. You know, and I was just kind of giving him shit. And I'm like, I gotta look at this fucking guy pulling in this car. And I was the winning caddy and that kind of stuff. He goes, come on, come on in, come into my office for a second. So he took me into his office and they would give all the players like stacks of Fleming Steakhouse cards, Ooh. you know, like $250 worth. And we get caddies would get a $50 Fleming Steakhouse card. You know, so he's like, here, take this. And he gave me a stack of them. It was like three grand with the, I, I took all my caddy buddies out to Fleming's that week. It wasn't the same as driving around in that BMW for the week, you know, but, but, but that's the way that they take care. It's of a caddies. nice alternative. Yeah. Yeah. So for everybody that's like, oh, the live caddies are taking care of so much better on the live tour than the PGA tour. We're taking care of just fine. We're taking care of just fine. And you don't hear much about that anymore, about how the live caddies are so spoiled ever since they kind of pull, pulled back the reins on budget and everything like that. But this golf course is going to be epic. It's probably going to be single digits. It's going to win it again. I would not be surprised to see a playoff. And we got, you know, you thought you had the bubble going to, trying to fit into the top 50 last week. Now you got the jumbo bubble this week with the top the big game. bubble, the big bubble. But hang on, before we get to the bubble, yeah. I do want to ask you about Patrick Cantlay. And now he's gone back to back at yeah, this yeah. tournament. Yeah. How yeah. do you feel about, you know, being the defending champion and having it be at a new golf course? I don't think it's going to bother a guy like that. You know, I, I think if you, if you, I, I think that if you said, okay, you know, Dustin Johnson won Pebble Beach back to back or or something like that. How much 
you know, well, that's, it's always that's, weird with U.S. Opens and stuff I to know. where, you know, yeah. it's a different course every year. You're not really yeah. defending your I championship really at the yeah. same golf course. But. Yeah, I never re- I never really thought about it that much, to be quite honest with you, Matt, you know, but I don't think it's going to I don't think anybody th- I, I don't I think you're the only one that's thinking about it, honestly, probably. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think it's any big I don't think it's any big deal, especially for these 50 guys. Right. These are the no, best. I mean Cantlay. Cantlay is coming off of a playoff loss. He, yep. you talked about it last week about circadian rhythms or something like that, right? Some biorhythms. Bio-rhythms. biorhythms. There we go. So you were talking about biorhythms and mm-hmm. how certain players play really well at certain times in the year. Yeah. Well, apparently yeah. this is Patrick Cantlay's biorhythm uh, month, month because yeah. he yeah. has won this tournament three, yeah. two years in a row. I almost said three years in a row. Gosh, yeah. Yeah, check might. myself, check myself okay. because he I know might. who you're going to end up picking in our penny bets <laughs> that are going <laughs> to no, come don't. up in just a little bit. But hey, I, it is going to be interesting to see if he can continue this because I mean, obviously he played really well last week to lose in a playoff. I mean, if it wasn't for that mishap of just barely going into the water, he probably ends up winning it. So it's, yeah, it's something there's something there, Bobby. Well, there's, you're on to something. There's always something there, but I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not telling you who my pick is or anything like that, but I definitely look for the cream of the crop to show itself, whether it would be John Rahm or Scotty Scheffler or Cantlay, or you can go, you can go absolutely, you know, one of those big name players that you expect to be right there. You know, nobody, nobody really, you know, the guys that were there a few years ago, obviously know the golf course, but they played, it's a completely different golf course than this year. So I don't think there's any advantage anywhere whatsoever. I'll tell you what I, you know, what, what I wonder about is, you know, what is so these playoffs are the FedEx Cup points are four times are worth four times what they are for a normal event that we play, you know, earlier in the year during let's just say during the regular season. So I, I wonder if like, you know, obviously there's the obvious pleasure, like the the you would say the guy with the X on his back is number 30, and that would be Sam Burns, right? And then 29 is like Chris Kirk, 28. The big guy who's under a lot a lot of pressure is is our guy, Sung Jay. He yeah. is 28. He's never He's never been outside 15. He's, he's always been a mathematical lock. He, he sacked up last week and finished sixth. He did not make a damn thing on Sunday. He had nothing but 13 footers. I know he's been grinding hard with his caddy, Willie Wilcox, and his putting coach, Josh Gregory. And like I said, I talked to Willie tonight and – you know, they, they think they got some things figured out. You know, Sanjay likes to lag some putts up there uphill and that kind of stuff. And, and, and Willie was asking my advice, like how to communicate with him and what keywords to use about, you know, into the grain or a bump in the middle of the grain or uphill and that kind of stuff to make sure he gets something, get something a little more oomph into it till they get to the holes because him being at 28th is, is charter territory is uncharted territory for him. And honestly, I don't know if he's going to handle it to, to, to tell you the truth. You know, I just don't know if he's going to handle it or not. If he gets off to a shitty start or something like that, we're going to see, you know, what kind of headspace that he's going to be in. Cause he's going to have to be in a good headspace to get to Atlanta this week, because, you know, if you're a Korean guy and you've been to the tour championship so many years in a row and you are some JM and you know, daddy not going to be happy. It would you be a disappointment, you know, no, huge. <laughs> no, huge. no, no kimchi. You know, and not just him, Jordan Spieth's on the bubble. He's 27. Terrell Hatton's on the bubble. He's 26. What's safe? You know what I mean? What is safe out there? Well, you know what I loved? I saw an Instagram clip. Did you see that I posted on the story about the guy? So Colin Morikawa goes into the tent afterwards and and is asking the guy with the computer for all of his numbers. You talk about that all the time. That's That's like, that's the guy. That's the guy. That's the FedEx guy who sits there in the scoring room and he's got his own little desk. So if you have any questions, he's already. Yeah. Colin wanted to know if he's in based Uh off of where he finished and everything. And he's like, you're pretty safe because it i think colin's yeah. at 22 right now yeah so he's not that. a mathematical lock but he's pretty safe well it's, so the deal is he's safe and you want to know why he's safe because there's not enough guys even with four times the points there's only 20 guys there's only 20 guys outside the top 30 so you can't have that many not that many guys are going to finish one through nine or one through ten it would have to be a perfect storm not with this much talent anyways you know That's and then you point. got and and then you you know you got guys that are, you know, thirty one through thirty five. Saith is is thirty one. You know, 
Um, Justin Rose is 32. I mean, th these guys, and this is just a tiny amount of points. Bobby Brown's breakout player of the year will not be his breakout player of the year, Kitayama, unless he gets to Atlanta. That would solidify Good the deal. old Kitayama. Kitayama. Denny McCarthy still hasn't won. He's right there at 34. He is right there. You Seamus Powers, 35. I haven't seen Seamus Powers show up on a leader. Good old leader Seamus. Board. Yeah, the, Our there Irish was, guy. There was talk that he was going to be a, like a Ryder Cup lock five or six months ago, you know, and he's gotten a little bit off for him. Uh, another big pressure guy is Cam Young's got to go super Yahtzee. He's 46, you know. Cam he's Young, old. we got yeah. Hovland. I mean, Hovland's been working hard on that golf swing. Yeah. He's been out there the last guy yeah, in the range. He's, shit. he's so good, man. He's, I he really be is. He's pure. You know, like I said, I don't remember much about Olympia Fields, and I definitely don't know anything about it in these conditions. But it's sure it's sure going to be one of those weeks where if you're driving it straight and you drive it long, it's going to be a nice little advantage. It's going to be a nice little advantage for you, that's for sure. So I think it's going to be super exciting. I think it's going to be a playoff, and I think it's going to be in the single digits. Those are my wow. big. Those are I my like big. Those. Three. Yeah, those are my. I big mean, that big. would be fantastic if it was in yeah. the single digits. And yes. I do have to wonder. There's one name that hasn't been mentioned, and I wonder if he would be under the same type of stress that Sung Jay is, based off of the Asian culture, which is Hideki. Matsuyama. I well, wonder if he, because he's sitting on the outside looking in right now yeah, to East Lake. Yeah, he's in the four. He's some. He's got to go super. He's got like top three or top five or something like that. He's somewhere. I don't know exactly where he is, but he's somewhere in the forties. And honestly, he had to. He had to play some serious golf the last hour and 47 minutes last week to even make it this far, which is surprising for Hideki because I don't think he's ever missed a tour championship, to tell you the truth. Well, so, that's why I'm thinking like prestige, yeah. like, you know, that culture. It's just like, man, he's yeah. got to be in there. So he's going to – I expect a big week out of Matsuyama. It's all punny for – it's all we, – we know. that I'm stating the obvious, but it's all – with most of these guys, it's all putting with – you know, it's all putting with Hideki. So, you know, you could say, oh, man, we lost all these guys to live and that kind of stuff. Well, then tell me how a guy like, like, get, if you don't think our talent pool's so deep, but, you know, I just mentioned why. Cameron Young's at 46 and Matsuyama's in, in, in the 40, in the in the low 40s somewhere, you know, we're, we're loaded with talent and there's, and hey, listen, if you get, I'm just going to tell you, if you get bored or any of our people get bored, you want to see the, you want to see how good talent is? The USAM comes on tomorrow, I think, on Peacock or Golf Channel at, from 5 to 6 or 5 to 7. Watch. Watch what's coming because these kids are unbelievable. I am connected to a kid a, a kid who is a who just left high school. His name's Willie Walsh. He's from Northern California. Quick little background, quick little side stories from Sam Mateo. His dad is Patrick Walsh. He is a legendary high school football coach. knows absolutely nothing about golf whatsoever. And his kid was going to be some kind of a great baseball player. He got the golf bug. And he's out there at 17 years old and he's in match play. And, you know, and we have our big three that made it into match play. You know, Gordon Sargent played great today. He made it into match play. Preston Summer has triple bogeyed the last hole and barely got into uh, match play. Dylan Menante is in there. Um, he left Pepperdine, went to UNC. I'm babbling a little bit, but for all of you real golf junkies, I've worked a handful of USAMs. They're pretty cool. They're pretty exciting. The kids are pretty fearless, and it's at Cherry Hills, and that's all I need to say about that. So if you get bored and you want to watch some golf on a Wednesday before before the big show starts, watch this USAM match because it's a doozy. It is an absolute friggin' doozy. I'm going to be popping it on tomorrow. That's for yeah, sure. I would like to give a personal congratulations to Shane Bacon. Do you know Shane Bacon? I he do. Okay, yeah. so Shane Bacon likes to tell you what a great golfer he is, and I'm going to give Shane Bacon congratulations for qualifying for this U.S. Amateur. But Shane, 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 you're not that good, my man. <laughs> 80 yesterday for Shane, and I think he was on pace. I can't pull it up right now because I don't want to embarrass him. <laughs> But I think he's going to go for 83 or 84. I think they're just finishing there in Denver with the time difference. Just uh, I like game. Shane. I, I So he's a lefty, obviously. Uh, if you look at his golf yeah. bag and everything. Yeah. And he's just – he's a good amateur golfer, but he's yeah. not like – especially with how much work he has to do yeah. just to get his game to that level because yeah. I know how tough it is. Listen. Being listen. in media and trying to keep your game in shape. I congratulated him for getting there because that you is – You did, and then you shat all over him. 
Well, because I just don't like these fucking guys that are like, oh, well, you no, know. No, but Shane up. Bacon's great. He's doing the Ping Tour podcast with Ping. And they mean, he's doing a, some good stuff. You know what aggravates me is they did a fucking what's in the bag for Shane Bacon on social media. What's in Shane Bacon's bag? And I'm like, who gives a fuck? He shot 80. <laughs> and he's getting sides <laughs> at it. He's getting it's still impressive. Out. And he's, he he's, probably he's, has some good gear. He gets it all yeah, probably from all the manufacturers for free. Yeah. I'm not getting it for free. I still got my Titleist blades in the bag. Oh, Bobby, did you just see, by the way, talking about club sponsors and getting free stuff, ping, and those new blueprint blades. Mm -hmm. So I was talking with their their tour guy about, I mean, this is going back six, seven months ago, and I was like, when are you guys going to come out with a real blade? Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, it's actually coming. He's like, mm-hmm. in 2024, there's going to be a real blade. Well, we just saw it because yeah. that yeah. ping blueprint, the T, which yeah. is the small face. Yeah. Ooh. I can tell you. you ping, know, holler I, at your boy. <laughs> well, I I don't have a ping connection, but I will tell you this. I have played every club ever, and I have gone through, you know, ping eyes, ping eye twos, all the way through beryllium, the copper beryllium's back in the day and that kind of stuff. And I will tell you what, I put, I used to put a ping club behind the ball and I'm like, this just looks terrible to me. You know what I mean? Around I do hall. because at college we were sponsored by ping and I didn't yeah. use ping golf clubs. Yeah, at the time. yeah, 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 yeah. But they make great stuff. I mean, they ob- absolutely, they make great stuff. This was supposed to be my rip on Shane Bacon. Sorry. I, I, I took Why? it into a direction where I'm trying to pump up Ping to hook me up, Ping. Come on. Oh, I'm shit. here in Arizona. I'm right here in Phoenix, Scottsdale, right in North Scottsdale area. Come on. Let's let's put this together. Let's make this happen. Let's do some promo. <laughs> Rest of these shows are yours. What do you got? We got the penny oh, bets, Bobby. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, don't 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 you dare skip too far ahead. Our audience is waiting for these penny bets. No, so, Bobby, last week I won the first one. I won the yeah. tier one yes. class. We don't really have two tiers anymore, so we can't do yes, that. Yes, we do. Yes, oh, we, we do. do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we don't have live for what, like seven months or something like that. All right, fine. Five weeks. We're going I, to go I'm, A and B. So I mean, you're because the you, you're the gosh, A-Bell. you are a gambler, aren't you? Because yes, you're just itching for multiple opportunities to cut down this lead um i am going to go with my first penny bet pick of the tier one class going john rom of course you are you favorite pick and mofo okay i'm gonna go with with, uh i'm gonna go with cantley you have to go with Cantley. Yeah, I'm gonna go well. It was it's Cantley his bio It was pretty simple for me. It was Cantley or Rory. So who picks B? Do I pick? You do B? because you won the B. Okay, the I'm tier take, two. I, I think this guy's gonna do something special soon. I'm gonna take Cam Davis. Cam. Cam Davis. Davis. Yeah. Wow. Cam nice. Davis guy. Nice selection you know, I there. I know. I know. And here's yeah. the thing. I'm gonna go with a B level because technically the tier two slash B level are guys that are on that borderline or outside of it. So it doesn't matter how good they were previously. Yeah. Well, I'll be the judge and jury on that. I'm going to go Hideki Matsuyama. It's not a B player, man. I'm just saying. He's won the Masters, bro. I know. But I'll give so him so has Denny Willett, by the way. So what? what I'm talking about here. So has Denny Willett. He almost won Napa. <laughs> <laughs> he almost he did. Five, from five feet. <laughs> Max Homer really, uh, <laughs> I can't even. That's messed up. All right. Your show. What's rest? What's Here the we rest? go, Bobby. Bobby, it yeah. is time, folks, for oh, Live man. Golf Bedminster. God, no, it is time. It is time. It is God, time. Oh, my God. <laughs> Bobby, that course showed up, though. You got to give it up to uh, you Bedminster. Said, you said it was a major. You know, we were supposed to. Have it's a, a yeah. The PGA was supposed to be there, and they moved it because before all the goddamn politics. politics. Yeah, Trumpy versus PGA Tour got yeah. involved. Oh, did you hear the poor little guy got indicted in Georgia last night too? Poor I mean, <laughs> he if just keeps hitting golf balls. Though you got to give him credit. He's not really paying a whole lot of attention to this crap that's going on legally. He's out there striping the ball. Well, he has a stripe, and I got paired with him at that. <laughs> yeah. Now, Country Club cheater. adjacent did yeah. one of their uh, where they try to get you to back off of the tee, and they did it with Trump. I gotta give him Not credit because yeah. man, they're like yeah. <laughs> they mentioned something about, about jail. One. 
let's see how far left he can hit this one. <laughs> <laughs> now, my favorite, my favorite one-liner from this week at the Live Golf Bedminster event was when an, when a fan goes, Phil, I'll bet you a thousand bucks you can't make this. And Phil turns to him and goes, I'm not a betting man. <laughs> you you want to know something? I have I, I have an alarm set because we all read the stuff. You know, I have an alarm set for when that Billy Walters book drops here any day. When is I, it? When is it dropping? Do I you don't know? know. I tried to get uh, it on audiobooks and it says pre-order. And I'm not a big pre-order guy unless it's some kind of Jordans or Dunks or something like that. But same. I can't, you know, it's so, he's so phony. About. Phil, so, I hate to say it, Phil is so phony, isn't he? He tried to bet 400 grand on the Ryder Cup. 400 grand. And by the way, that was 2012 that I was involved in. And we lost. That was the miracle at Medina when they yeah. came back and stoned us the last day. Thank and God Billy, he didn't bet it. And Billy Walter said, and Billy Walter said, what are you doing? You're one of the greatest golfers of all time. You cannot do this. I'm not going to push this action shoot through. So, you know, Phil comes out. You know, Phil said a month ago when they were giving him shit, oh, I, I stopped gambling. I'm not gambling. Well, the idiot, they video, you know, Bryson's social media team videoed the whole $1,000 you, you know, when you're closed out, you can press for half. So he is still gambling. And then do you see he comes on the record and he's like, oh, yeah, I never bet on the Ryder Cup. It's like, yeah, no shit. Nobody was going to take your act. Nobody was going to take your action. And actually, you saved 400 grand plus juice. <laughs> I yeah, would imagine. Seriously. Plus juice minus 110. You probably saved four, except 440 grand. So, you know, a, a little off the a little off the path there, but I can hardly wait for that book. That well, I got my birdie chain going just like my range goats because they got the range goat chain. So that's why I had to break it out for the live golf portion of this show. Bobby had to break it out. All the right. gold necklace. You got to love it. I do have a birdie chain as well on my golf bag. So it's not uh it's this your is show not a one-time deal. Well, <laughs> Bobby, Cam tour. Cam Smith really dominated. Yeah. The what what do you normally say the cream rise to the top? Yeah, well, he him him there's only you know, if that was if the live tour was if the PGA tour was corn on the cob, there's 150 pieces of a little nip what do you call them? Niblets? What do you call them? <laughs> Niblets? <laughs> There's I'm just gonna let you own that. I'm if just gonna Liv let you own that one. Yeah. Was, if Liv was a corner on the cob, it would be that little one from the Tom Hanks movie Big. Remember Big when he when he's an adult and he goes to the. Do you know what I'm talking about? I just about? you know what yeah. I, I can't. The one thing that really gets me, and HV3, he yeah. when he came no. on to live golf, he was very open and honest. I took it yeah. for the money. Like that's what I did. I wanted to yeah. make a crap ton of money, change my life, change my family's life. And now he's coming out and saying it's so much more difficult to win on live golf than it is the PGA tour. I'm like, bud, how would don't you don't know? say that? How would you know? You exactly. Were close to winning on the PGA. Exactly. Tour. Never close. I mean, yeah. it just That's that one really cool. bugged me. Then that, by the way, folks, that is the grandiose kind of ego persona that live golf portrays, which I'm sorry, the people that love live golf, which I happen to be one of them, but I have to mute it because of all those grandiose, like, yeah, unpractical um what is the word for it it's it's embellishing they embellish yeah. everything about it and it's like listen cam smith like if we take away all the grandiose bravado ego bullshit and you just look at the golf tournament itself cam smith played one hell of a golf tournament and separated himself from the pack phil mickelson we saw remnants of of the old Phil Mickelson, and it was really cool to to watch. I don't know if you caught any of the action, Not Bobby, nice. but Not Phil nice. looked like the old Phil up until he ended up making a triple on a par three, and all of a sudden it went right back into his shell. Oh, Matt, Matt, he made an eight. An eight. An eight on a par three. Can I keep, give you one, What two yeah, quick comments? That's the little part of Harold Varner that rubs me the wrong way that I've talked about numerous times. And you number, have. Phil, number two, Phil ain't that good anymore. I'm sorry, he's 50-something years old. He ain't that good anymore. But, Bobby, as a longtime, I, I would say a lifetime fan of Phil, as mm -hmm. the golfer, not the person mm -hmm. outside of it and everything, mm -hmm. but Phil is the golfer. And being a diehard fan and watching him when he when his game is on, it's just like when Tiger is on. 
to where you get spoiled with how good those guys really are and how much better they were than everybody else. Yes. And that's where like seeing the little, even the, th like the Friday and then a little bit into Saturday, um, it just felt great to see Phil playing that well again. Um, yeah. and it gave me kind of the flashbacks to Kiwa Island and the ocean yeah. course and the PGA yeah. championship sure. because live golf for the first time in a while, they played a real golf course. And yeah, it well, showed. It showed with the numbers. You, showed with the it, scores. It, it, that's a major golf course. Yeah, that's for sure. Trumpy did something right. He's got. He bought himself. He's got himself a. Um, do you do you want to know that that is Phil's best finish since he's been on the Live Tour? A tie that's insane, play? isn't it? Just absolutely crazy. It's just insane. You know. Other than that, there really wasn't a ton to talk about with that golf tournament. Other than the course. Cam Smith's impressive victory and Phil Mickelson showing signs of the old Phil, which yeah. he's old. So I guess that all fits. But yep. really, when we look at additional standout performances, Anurban Lahiri played really well. Abraham Answer, Patrick Reed looked good. Dean Burmester, Burger Meister, Burger Meister, Meister, Meister Burger. Burger. There we go. Yep. But yep. That's where I, I and I'm sorry, it wasn't a triple bogey. You're right. It was a costly eight. eight. It's even here yeah, in my eight. notes. Eight uh, on but Come on. That that's just brutal. But I will the one thing that I will take away from Live Golf this week is yeah. that Cam Smith must have lit a fire under Jedediah's ass. <sighs> because Jedediah Morgan was sitting there close to last beating my guy C1 Kim for last place. Yes. And sure enough, goes out. Final round. 66. Five under. 66. Yes, yeah. I know that. I'm very much aware of that. Did you hear his little sob story too? I called my daddy on the phone <laughs> on Saturday night and I was in tears and he really pumped me up and I went out and shot 66. Was well, it a landline? That's what I want to know. Yeah, Is Jedediah Morgan really part of the Amish? I just need He's to know well. that. Jedediah Morgan, he was not going to be a member of the Live Tour next year because we all know that unless you have double secret captain probation or whatever. Yeah, but uh, which Aussie is going to take over for him? Well, I don't know. I mean, they could, you know, there's a lot of things that aren't unknown, but supposedly, according to Live, if you finish out, if you're not a captain or a team owner or whatever, and you finish outside the top 24, um, that you can you, that you're going to get relegated and you go got to go back through some qualifying. Did you read today that they announced that that next year they're going to be able, so obviously there's going to be a live golf next year it's official but um that you can trade players next year that the, you can yes. trade players. Matthew team. Wolf would have been the yeah, untradeable so player. Yeah, he'd been traded like three times next year. We've already <laughs> been traded like three times. I can't wait to get rid of him. He's like the James Harden yeah. of uh, yeah. the Live Golf Tour. We have a quick shout out to Dan, my boy Danny Lee. Nice 15 over par. That's some great play in there, Dan. Well done, Danny. And you know, and maybe West you've got a new player on uh, yeah. your golf picks, but louder segment. I could, I could, but I hate him so much that as soon as I picked him, he would probably play good. But Lee Westwood in the cellar, 20, 20 over par or 23 over par. I love that you're just going down the leaderboard, seeing who you can just rip. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of them to rip at the bottom of the leaderboard. Doesn't matter what tour you're. Well, on. now we got our hiatus again with yeah, Live Golf, weeks, which right? is a five bummer. Weeks? I know it's it's brutal. Now it's going to get some pressure for some of those guys. You know, when at what at what point after the dear loss of our friend Mikey Perez do I have to keep clamming up on Pat Perez's golf? Like, you've I got a couple. Awesome. You've got until the at least next till year? the next. Yeah, let's yeah. let's. Let's push it out to yeah. next year. You, do, you tell me say. when I'm good to go. I you will tell me when I'm good to go because I will. I'm not him, and I wouldn't and I wouldn't go there. But he's the X on his back right now. He's number, I believe, he's number twenty four. And those four aces are off form. The four U lines off form. Dustin's not. Dustin DJ just looks there. disinterested. Like Why he doesn't does? look like he's yeah. excited to be out there. Yeah, he got five hundred million dollars in the bank. Probably, I think he was. I think I read he was the sixth highest paid athlete last year, including all that live contract money. And you know, he's got bigger and better. He's got bigger and better things to do. He's got the boat. He's got mansions. He's got Paulina. He's got kids, and he's got some money to spend. And he's got net jets. You know, and he's there. You go. Probably well, not Bobby, just supporting most people. Why don't we recap our golf picks, but louder segment, oh, no, which <laughs> I mean, the recap is that 
we already talked about Jedediah Morgan. So Bobby yep. picked Jedediah, which yep. his real name we know, folks, is Jediah. It's Jedediah. It's Jedi. It's Jediah, and it's not Jedediah. But the big we story here is your. Man I really Steve like Hawk him playing good last week for him. He did. He played really well there for a couple of days, and uh, luckily, I still took the victory. He is still a cheat code. It's very difficult to beat Siwon Kim in the golf picks, but louder segment. And I will also say this, your team, you got to pick a new team the next time we do golf picks, but louder. Where did they finish second or third or something? Yeah, third, I believe. They were on the podium, Bobby. Bobby, you picked them two weeks in a row and they finished on the podium both weeks. You can't pick a hot hand. I didn't know Lefty was getting careered. I thought he did it all over the map on that major championship golf course. But shame on me. I mean, if Lefty's going to play good anywhere, it's going to be on a major track probably, not some hit and giggle. We even had James Piott out there. We had a sighting from him. Did did you know I know Siwon Kim has not made one point for his team this year? Chase Kepka has one point this year. If he gets relegated, does his brother have enough power to say, my my brother's staying on the team? Yeah. Do we know if they can do that? Can they 100%. do that? 100%. They can? You well, think so? here's the thing. He can go and literally just say, no, he's coming back. Yeah, gotcha. I like, gotcha. there's enough pull there. Yeah, I feel so like it's good. early enough to where, like, you can't be forced a, a player onto your team. You're still going to have that option, and I think he's going to do that for his brother. He's going to say, hey, my brother did really well one tournament, so he yeah. got one point. And no, one well, actually, my brother made a hole-in-one at Adelaide. Yeah, and that's a bigger yeah, stock. bigger accomplishment. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, next time that Liv comes around, we're actually going to change the episodes so Matt can pop off about how good he is at Liv at the start of the episode, and then I can get some glory when I go one and one on the A and B and the PGA Tour, and we end the episode. I off. do love that. It normally, whenever we do two tiers on the PGA Tour, you at least get one yeah. of them. I'm down a hundred. I'm down a buck fifty now. No, right? no, one, it's it's worse than that. I no, it's that. not. Yeah. It was one thirty. It ended at no. one thirty last week. We well, slicked the here's it, I what? did gain an extra thousand, and now I just gained an an extra two thousand. You didn't gain an extra thousand last week. We, I did. No, we split. I won no. the. No, you yeah. So we split the PGA Tour, and then oh. I won two thousand. For the live yeah, golf event and then i just want so you brought it down to 12 and then i moved it up to fourteen thousand because of golf picks but louder because i won both of those and then we have this week which uh, now we're up to sixteen thousand pennies okay okay I, you're I, gonna I have think, to rob a bank for those I pennies. i think you're high right now okay i think i think you're super baked <laughs> and super high right now so i know that is a my favorite is it because of the gold chain? Is that is that really just setting it off? Flav a Flav burned a big one. Go over this <laughs> math again. Before live before our live bets, what was our number after the PGA Tour? So after the PGA Tour, so let's let's put it this way: before the episode last week, what yeah. was the total at? I, I can't think that far back. It was thirteen thousand. Yes. Yeah. Right. So. We split the PGA Tour, which means there's zero. And then I won both of the Live Golf, which that's 2,000. So So that's 15,000 at that point. Then for this week, oh, my God, it actually just went up even more. Yeah, I'm down down 15,000 pennies. I don't know. We're going to have to do a check. It's 15,000 pennies. Just call it that. I know exactly what I'm talking about. (laughs) It's we're gonna, we're, okay, we're going to call it at 15,000. Yes. We got 15,000 pennies is yeah. where you're at today. I'm yes. I, I'm going to sign off on that unless audience members, if you're listening and you're keeping track yeah. of this, you yeah. put that in the YouTube comments for us. Most of our audience members like me more than you. That's true. No, That's not 15,000 $15, dollars. <laughs> Jesus, Bobby. I, I, it's 15,000 pennies. I to get you the winner. Jeez, man. Yeah. I don't want to have your kids have to move. Yeah, no kidding. School starting next week. We can't do that. All right. So what this else? wraps it up. I mean, that's right. it, Bobby. That's all we got. We've got Good awesome one. stuff upcoming in the weeks to come. Obviously, we've got the FedEx Cup playoffs that are going to be moving into East Lake next week. Then after that, we move into the Ryder Cup up where we're going to have a special episode before and after and then i mean for this episode you got 
really all of it. You got the recap of the first event at St. Jude of the FedEx Cup playoffs. You got the BMW Championship analysis from us. You've got Live Golf Bedminster as we recap that with our golf picks, but louder results. Man, what an episode, Bobby. I appreciate you. you and it, uh, here's the thing. Until next week, folks. Uh, and just, I can't wait. Can't wait for next week, Bobby. Looking forward to it. Hasta la vista. Thank you for tuning in to Season 2 of the Pull Hook Golf Podcast. Make sure to hit subscribe and go to www.pullhookgolf.com for more.